Welcome back everybody, this is Christian and Roman. Our trip in Laos is now finished and like we did for Myanmar, we're gonna do a video to give you some information and tips about how to travel in Laos. So number one, it's a visa. So basically, if you are coming from Thailand, you will arrive on the immigration of Laos and there you can get a visa on arrival. It's very simple and easy. And cheap. The thing that we notice the most is that if you are coming from Thailand and you want to cross the border to Laos, the people there are really nice on the border. They will help you, they are friendly. You don't need a picture. It's pretty weird, but we arrived there without picture and we're like, oh, it's going to be a problem. And the guy said, no picture? Okay. No problem. He didn't even ask for money. Yeah, and some people had the picture and uh, we didn't. No problem. Yeah. And the visa costs $30. When you cross from Laos to Cambodia, there is a little problem already. The people there are not really friendly, no. they are not smiley, they will not tell you even hello. No, they are really not cool and they try to take the more they can from your money. I mean, they are not asking for 100 euro, of course, but they ask you money you don't really know why for, you know? Like there is this stupid uh, fake medical exam, which is pretty weird. And the girl, she's like, sit here, she gives you a paper and you're like, why am I doing that? And the tip for that is to just wake up and run to the immigration. The second problem is that you have to pay $5 for the stamp out. And the third problem, it was our mistake obviously, that we didn't really check the date of our leaving of the country. Because we were really chilling in Dundet, you know? It was really nice. <laughs> so we overstay for one day. And when you overstay one day, you have to pay $10 per day, per, per person. person. So number two, one of the main points, the food. Okay, so compared to Myanmar, we told you that we were a bit disappointed by the food. It was not really good, really oily. Sometimes the f meat were cold, so really not comparing to Thailand, it was really low in our acceptation, okay? But Laos, we were pretty impressed because it's almost the same than Thailand. They don't do everything the same, but there is a lot of plate food look like exactly uh, the same. So we ate kind of well for one month. There is a lot of choice. It was good. What was your favorite plate, Roman? There is something they call the lap. It's like in Thailand they do it more like a, a beef salad with slice of beef. But there it's more like the beef is really cut in little pieces, served <laughs> with lemon, with uh, mint. mint, a lot of mint, and spicy, and with some onion. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's the best. So remember that lap. A lap is really good. And number three, it's about the buses. So basically in Laos, you're always going to take a bus. There is no other option, maybe sometimes a boat. Okay. When you book the bus, they will always tell you, oh, this bus is going to arrive in your destination at this time. So you're like, okay, but that's kind of okay this time. They lie to you, they it's not true. They always lie. We were supposed to arrive at nine in uh, Vancien, and we arrived at two in the morning. So I will not trust them at all. I think in Laos it's very chilled and very slow. I think if you want to do 200 kilometers, it can take you a full day. Like in Myanmar almost, you know? Mm -hmm. But in Myanmar, the roads were not that destroyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go really deep in the land, yeah, they were, but most of them, they were pretty okay. In there, in Laos, it's pretty destroyed. It's really bad condition, so your bus is like bumping, it's not really cool. But it's the only way to ride around the country. And that leads us to number four. Like Roma said, that the roads are really dusty and destroyed. When you're going to ride a scooter, you should definitely wear the mask protection on your face because you're going to be and full of dust. And they know it because they sell it absolutely everywhere in every shop. It's very cheap and very handy. Mm -hmm. Another thing about the road is that, for example, from uh, Van Vien to Van Sien, the road looks like very nice road for like 200 meters, very destroyed road for 100 meters. It's so, really weird. So that's why everything is very slow and very dusty. And there is something I don't understand because it's where there is the famous town called Rong Prabang, okay? And it's like the most visited place in Laos. Why the roads there are not cleaner? Because if you go in the south of the country, the roads are perfectly clean. Like they are really perfect and there is no problem and there is no holes. And so I don't understand why, but 
I guess in the next few years they will uh, improve those roads. We hope so, because from Vincennes to the north, everything destroyed. Terrible. Be prepared for that. For number five, uh, it's kind of a sensitive subject, but I think it's really important to share that with you. So we went to Vang Vieng, of course where you can do the tubing, but we'll speak about that after. But there is something happening there. Uh, it's like a big scam uh, that the cops are doing, okay? So first, we want to say, it's not a big problem, but we are not smokers, okay? I mean, of weed, we are not smokers, but there is a lot of people who smoke, and you should know that. There, in Vang Vieng, there is some bar, especially one, where you can smoke some weed and buy it at the reception. Even if in Laos, you don't have the right to smoke. This bar probably work with the police, so you have the right to smoke inside of the bar, okay? But we heard uh, two or three different stories, and it's not a friend from a friend and a friend, no, no, it's a, we met the guy and he told us that it happened just the night before. He was smoking a joint out of this bar on the terrace of his hostel, so there were like four, two girls, two guys from Germany, and they were smoking and they saw something in the shadow, like moving, you know? And suddenly there is a cop jumping to them, and like they begin to freak out like what's going to happen so what they do in this kind of moment you have to come tomorrow at the police station and we keep your passport and tomorrow you come with 500 dollars each if you want to smoke smoke inside of your bungalow with the door closed or smoke inside of this bar, bar. exactly it's the only one place you can smoke and the second thing i want to say the cop is there, they are always in the civil, so mm -hmm. you will not really recognize if it's a cop or not. So yeah. Apparently you can even go to a party and see them dancing close to you with the handcuff just there. Because they are just waiting to catch some people. And number six is also about Van Vieng. So in Van Vieng there is one of very famous things to do and it's a tubing. You take a tire and you go on the river. You can stop in some of the bars, there is a, maybe four now. Before it was 26, 26, 30 bars, all the shore of the river. They bring you to the shore, you drink, you drink, you drink. I don't know how much you can. So basically, there was a few accidents in 2012, where one of the son of the Australian Prime Minister died there. So the government of Australia put a huge pressure on the Lao government to close all of those bars because too many people have died there. We don't have the number, but I don't know, I would say at least 20 people died there for sure. It's really not a good mix like river, alcohol, drugs. Mm. Um, so they close and destroy most of the bar. And like Christina said, there is only three or four bars now open. But still? We did it, and it was pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be totally wasted. Mm -hmm. You can just be not. a bit drunk, but just, you know yourself, you go easy, and that's all. And the river is not really deep, but it's a really funny experience. So number seven? You should know that Laos was heavily bombed during the Vietnam War. And basically, it was maybe over two million of bombs there. And some of them are still inside of the earth, and untouched. Ready to explode. So that's why if you are doing some trek or hike, I think it's a very good idea to take a guide because if you go off the beaten path, you never know, but it can happen. Of course, we all want to take a tent and go to sleep in the middle of the jungle. Some people will tell you that it's not a big deal, but you never know. Imagine, you know, we don't know if they are deep, you don't know if they are on the surface. It can happen. And it's not the only country in the world. There is a lot of country in the same kind of situation. So be careful with that. And number eight, let's speak about money. In Laos, they are using a kip. Their currency is really high. The bank notes can be from 10,000 to 100,000. Mm -hmm. And these two notes can be very similar and very confusing if you pay something. So be very careful and count your zeros. Yeah, because <laughs> first, you can do the mistake. And secondly, the guy, the tuk tuk driver, or whatever, he knows these things, okay? He's from this country. He knows that there is two similar banknotes, and he's like, oh, it's dark, Ali. he's not going to see, and you get scammed. So be careful. But the thing is, even when I was paying, the Lao people give me uh, more money than they should. Yeah, it's work also in the other sense, you know? Okay, so number nine, which is pretty important, it's about the telecom the sim card so when you arrive there you can buy of course a sim card and the price are really cheap you buy your little paper they 
scratch it in front of you there is a number that you enter in your phone and then you are credit of few datas and the price is for five giga which is for three days you pay one euro which is pretty interesting and you don't need that much i think i mean except if you are watching all of our videos of course thank you and number 10 let's speak about love language you should definitely know how to say hello because it's really nice when you arrive to some place and you can say it, Roma? Sabadi! That's been hello. And when you want to say thank you? You say cup chai and if you say thank you a lot, you say cup chai Leila! That's my favorite, it sounds yeah, really cute. It's cute. <laughs> Well, anyway, we hope that this little video helped you a little bit at least, that we give you some tips and information. So, give a little thumbs up. And enjoy Laos. Yeah, ciao.